Transportation Committee meeting is convening at 10:16 a.m. on August 24, 2023. This meeting is being held by MS Teams video conference is being recorded. The recording will be posted on the internet uh, for public viewing. The Health Licensing Office asks that individuals attending through MS Teams for public viewing MS Teams, keep your phone muted and cameras off during the entire meeting until you are given an opportunity to comment during the public and interested parties feedback period, if indicated on the agenda. Please do not use the chat feature during meetings. I will now call roll. Holly Scholes. Colleen Forbes absent, Julia Bailey absent, Greg Ramirez. Here. <laughs> uh, Desiree Lang, is that how Here. I say it? Yeah. Okay. Desi, I'll put, I'll say Desi, it's easier. Um, and Catherine B. Here. Okay. I thought Julia Bailey retired, Sammy. What? From the board. What? I thought Julia Bailey retired from the committee. Uh, maybe she did. She's still on the list, though. I'll take her off. Uh, members, when you wish to speak, state your last name for the record. Board members are asked to not use the chat feature during um, the meetings. Public members attending in person wishing to speak must first sign on the roster sheet available for public members calling in on the public phone line. For MS Teams, please email April Fleming at april.fleming at oha.org.gov and provide your first and last name. The public interest party feedback period will be heard during the public and interest party feedback period if indicated on the agenda. Everyone is asked to use appropriate manner, language, manners, and protocols when conducting board business. This meeting is now called to order. I like doing that. Okay, um, so I'm just going to kind of go through the agenda. Um, so the the overview is now I'm going to just briefly kind of hit these high points that I sent you guys in the email this morning that had the item writing guidelines. Holly, I forgot to send these to everybody, so I sent them this morning. So but I'll go ahead and hit the highlights that way um, we have a understanding, I guess. And then we'll go into executive session to review um, the written examination questions potentially the skills exam questions. Um, yes, and then clarify any competency content that we may need to revise based on the questions. Um, talk about supervisor training, preceptor, kind of all of those things. If you want to, we don't necessarily have to. It could go to the rules committee and they could decide that stuff, but you could weigh in. I'll totally up to you guys. And I did not get the TXA FAQ finish, so you don't get that. You don't get the rule schedule. And then um, how we're going to report this out to the board. What are you trying to say, Holly? We can't hear you, Holly. We can't hear you. I think she's muted on the phone line. There we go. Maybe. What happened? Can you hear us? I, we can't hear you. That's weird. Nope, nothing. The little icon where you're calling in at does show that it's muted. On MS Teams or on her phone? Phone. On the phone. If I unmute the computer, oh, yeah, see what happens when I unmute the computer? Yeah. yeah. On MS Teams, it looked like it looks like your phone line is muted, Holly, not I mean also your computer line, but if you go to like the phone app again and you have it on like where you can click speaker phone. Is there an option to unmute? Like, is there a little microphone button on that screen? We can't hear you. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, my God. Try star six. Holly, hit star six. There we go. 
We can nope, can't hear. Hit star six again. Oh. That's so weird. It did take the um, mute icon away and then bring it back. OK, so now the mute icon's gone. I still can't hear you. Is your volume up, Holly? Yeah. And are you on speakerphone? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, wait, say something. We can hear her. Talk, Holly. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I didn't do, I just changed back to where it was when you couldn't hear me. <laughs> so I don't know what happened. Weird. I'm not doing anything, I promise. I'm not pressing anything or doing anything. <laughs> I have the same problems, Holly. You're not alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No. So quickly go through this um, guideline sheet. So, um, and Holly used this when she was writing the test questions and Brandon did some help with that. Um, so don't use um, any trick items because the questions are already uh, tricky. So you don't want them you know, to be trickier because <laughs> they're already you know, concerned and um, you don't want to unintentionally cause um, you know, irrelevant content or overlapping options. Things like that. Um, single measure a single construct and examine incorrectly answers an item that has multiple constructs, it is impossible to know which construct is not mastered. Um, avoid option based items, so never ask what would you do, use, try, nothing like that. Avoid absolute modifiers, um, so the use of absolute modifiers and options make it easy to eliminate options, increasing and guessing probability. Um, avoiding excess verbiage, so keep it clean. Um, less words as possible and um, avoid unnecessary background. Um, avoid over specific and over general content. So try to find the middle. Um, use novel content. Do not repeat exact wording from materials. Repeated wording tends to test recall and recognition rather than learning. Um, keep items independent. Write items at a sixth grade level. And uh, do not teach the purpose of the certification is to verify knowledge. Um, and guidelines for writing the STEM. Write the STEM in the form of a question. So that's the question. And then the guidelines for writing the options. So those are uh, the option the answer. Make the correct answer always correct. And then the distractors are all the ones that are not the answer. So if we need to reference this, we will. Otherwise, um, we can go into executive session unless you have any questions. Do you want me to give a background now or give the background later during executive session? Go ahead and give the background now. Okay. So what that meant is that we couldn't ask two calls. We couldn't ask, basically all we can ask is multiple choice. Each question had to have four answers. Only one of them had to be clearly right. Um, and there had to be four answers. So sometimes that was really challenging to come up with an answer that was remotely, like I couldn't have the answer be giraffe, right? That couldn't be the fourth answer. So that part was really challenging. We also had to have every question have a citation of where somebody could find it. And we did not, do that with the competencies. We didn't have citations of where we found that information. So I had to go through and find citations for every question. The cited sources had to be fairly accessible or even free. So I used um, open source nursing text, the pdr.net, which has the most of the uh, patient inserts, medication inserts that have a lot of the information about the medication. Um, what else? So it was not, oh, and we had a limitation on how many total questions we could have, even including, you know, the ones that go into the, uh, the, the, uh, the optional questions that are going to roll in and roll out. So I was told to have about 130 to 140 total questions. 
and we had like 250 options that we wanted me to write questions for. Oh. So that was too many. So I had to go through a process of figuring out if I could write a question that met the state's criteria first. And if I could find a citation for it that was a reasonable place to find a citation. And so when you look at the document, do we have, um, Sammy, are the questions that were omitted still in the document? Because that's an important part for people to have available to them. No. Because they need to review. So we talked about making those available because they need to look at those questions to see if any of those questions need to be included, and then the other and another question that doesn't need to be included. That's going to be an important part because I didn't write questions for everything that were in, that I was that we decided as a group that there should be questions for. Hey, I will so the send them the omitted questions. Okay, that'd be great. Just the right one, now. the thing that I originally had might be good enough. Because I highlighted in yellow the ones that we're not gonna, but at this point I'm recommending we not do. So in some cases, for instance, the very first competency says define a drug, and you cannot find a single definition of a drug, and you also cannot easily come up with an answer that is a reasonable answer, not giraffe, that would be alternative to the many alternative, the many options for what is a drug. So I just decided we're not gonna do that one. And so I did that in some cases. Um, so then once I had worked with the list and I actually started by color coding everything. And then I went back to the competencies and made some suggestions to make the competencies match the test a little better. Um, because I had, so for instance, instead of having a competency now that says, Define legend drugs and devices because I couldn't find an appropriate definition that how what we do. I changed that competency to explain how an Oregon licensed midwife can use legend drugs and devices. Because I remember in our conversation that that was more the concern is how do people know that they can't prescribe legend drugs and devices, they can only use them for professional use. So I used my discretion um, and what I remembered from our conversations and tried to pick. So another consideration is that sometimes the answers were exactly the same from drug to drug. So turns out side effects and um, con not contraindications, um, adverse reactions are basically the same for every single for good drug we have. And so, and, it, and, and there's a lot of them potentially, a ton. So coming up with four answers that didn't include even one thing that was a potential drug interaction, you know, drug reaction or side effect was really, really hard. There were a few that I managed to do it with, but most of them I relegated to the we're not even going to try category. The other thing is that when you look on that PDR site or even the other site, Daily Meds, I think it is, those are both sites that make accessible the um, the drug inserts, the patient information inserts, they just put them up on online. Um, no longer is there a PDR book that doesn't exist, hasn't existed for about six years. Um, they do not have a category called side effects. They only have adverse reactions, mild, moderate, and severe. And so I made the assumption that mild, moderate would be side effects and severe would be negative reactions. And we added those words to the competencies and to the questions to make it really clear. If somebody was looking at those inserts that that's what we meant. We don't have to do that. I am open, but I could not find a place that was consistent that used the word side effects. So even the pharmacology for midwife texts are not very um, specific about those things. And then something like using um, Cytotech which is an off-label use, forget it. It was really, really hard. I did find some articles on side of text that I, I relied on, but um, so that was the process of, of thinning out the questions, writing the questions, following the state format, and then crossing back to the competencies to make sure that there's good you know, consistency between them and then making sure that they all had some kind of citation. And those citations are listed on the reference sheet that was sent out this morning if you wanted to look at them. 
I did end up having to cite holistic midwifery too, even though it's really old because it was the only place that had midwifery information. And we ended up, I ended up citing the paramedic text more than I wanted to because a lot of midwives don't own paramedic text, but that was where the information was. So it wasn't enough for me to go, everybody knows this thing. It had to have a specific, or at least one specific reference. Any questions about the process that got us here? So once I got the questions done with the references and in a section, then we were in two separate documents, one for required and one for um, roll in. And then at the end of each of those two documents in yellow were the questions that I had excluded for the various reasons. Um, and that, uh, that's what I turned in, and then Brandon retyped the questions that we're keeping, which is what was sent to you, in the format that the state requires. So he did that this week, started last week, and finished it this week. So it's been quite a process, and in case you think I'm a selfless person, I am not, because I've been paid as a consultant to do this work, which was a lot of work. That sounds like so much work, <laughs> Thank you for doing that. I am not that selfless at all. So, <laughs> so I did, I am contracting to do it. So I'm not paid for this meeting. This meeting, I'm not, anything that all, everybody does, I don't get paid for. But everything that nobody else did, I got paid for. <laughs> so, um, yeah. full disclosure. Glad to hear that. Thank you. Yeah, I, I couldn't do it otherwise. It was too much time. Any questions about any of that mess? Sound like a good way to proceed? Yes. So my hope for this meeting was um, that we could, in uh, executive se session, kind of go through the questions that are included and see if any of those look like wrong. And actually, my real hope, and Brandon's real hope, and I think Sammy's real hope is that we could have gotten this to you three days ago so that you could have had a chance to look them over, but that did not happen. So, um, but if we could just quickly look through them, not even read them out loud, because that takes so much time necessarily, unless that's what the, you know, the rules say we have to do, but um, I just look to see if they look a little not right, or, you know, if you have a better idea for an answer, and then to look at the ones that were not included to see if one of those you just really feel like should be included is really important. And then we can problem solve how to write a, a question for it. Sometimes they're in there because I couldn't find references and I can put time into looking for more references, but you know, I already put a lot of time in. So if it is really important, I am happy to do that, but it's not going to be a quick and easy fix, I don't think. So it's not that you can't come up with answers. I can come up with answers. It's hard to come up with citations, right? We already have answers in our competencies. But because we didn't cite where we got that information, that has had to be created from scratch. The time. That is all I have to say, Sammy. Okay, Yeah, so I just sent the omitted questions to everybody so you now have them. The omitted questions, is that what you said? Yeah, because yeah. I didn't have them attached to the other questions that Holly had sent me and a document that I sent you all. So I had just sent a separate document with all the omitted questions. So just to sorry to clarify, you're saying these are questions that got written, but that got omitted because there were not appropriate citations for them. Yes. They were omitted because they were originally, when we went through the document, the questionnaire document, we went one, two, three. They were either ones or twos. But when I went to write the questions, I either couldn't get good answers, I couldn't find a reference, or it was repeating. It was too hard, like all the medications with the sign side effects slash adverse reactions, that kind of thing. So I just put them in a separate section so you could see what I pulled. And hopefully we can look at that quickly and just go, sure. Now, it's not that it's, and, and remember that anything we add, we have to pull something else out. Also, we can't just add 10 questions because we're limited in how many total questions we can have. Apparently the medical board, uh, the state licensing exam only has like 80 questions on it. 
And that's because they take a whole lot of courses and take a whole lot of other tests. But in Oregon, you're not required to have any mandatory education. You know, even under this new program, it's just competency based. So um, mm -hmm. I fought hard to get the 120 questions. You know, and Sammy and I had questions, and then she had to go to her supervisor and make the case. The other thing at first was that we were not going to be allowed at first, and thank you, Sammy, for getting that straightened out. We were, I was asked not to use any online sources, only hard copy sources, and that was not going to work at all. I needed articles from journals and, and yeah. EDR, and I used the open source textbook if we wanted to keep the cost down. Because to even figure out which nursing text to use would have required buying two or three textbooks to see whether I they had anything useful in them. So, yeah. so in the end, the powers that be, thanks to Sammy and Brandon, um, said she left, literally left one of our meetings. I'm, like, I'm going to Bob right now. <laughs> well, because I I use for all the rulemaking, I use online sources. The yeah. boards use that for years, so it's. I mean, it's not ideal, I guess, but if it's free and it's available, and things change in the medical profession so quickly that you just have to be on the fly. So we're gonna put a, some kind of statement on that reference sheet that says these are online sources because blah 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 so yeah so mm -hmm. even without the admitted questions we still have the correct email we have 60 mandatory and 72 optional uh -huh, so 132 is. total questions but i just there, want to make sure that you guys have looked at them because i didn't consult with anybody when i did this i just did it um Knowing, you know, knowing the material, knowing what we talked about, knowing things, not just, you know, arbitrarily, but, um, and doing the work. And I just want to make sure that it looks good to you guys. So I know that's a slog to go through them, but um, hopefully we can do it fairly quickly. And then, and then we can rubber stamp it and send it on to the board for them to then have a lot of questions. And my plan is to go to that board meeting to explain all of this to them so that they understand that this isn't just a, you know, that this has been a process to get to these questions and not just an arbitrary off the cuff, quick little. We can't hear you again. Say something. Oh. Oh, now we can hear you. Nothing. Can you hear me? Can't hear you. Oh, can you all hear Sammy? Can you guys hear me? Now I can hear you. Okay. That's so weird. I haven't had this much trouble on I do. Okay. Are you ready for me to read you in the executive session? Can't hear you. Now you're back. What is going on? This is weird. There's a ghost in the machine. There really is. I trust me, the ghost visits me frequently. Ask Brandon. <laughs> He's to fix my printer at least twice a week. Okay, I'll read you guys into executive session. The Board of Direct Entry Midwifery, Legend Drugs and Devices Qualification Committee will now meet in executive session pursuant to ORS 192-6602F and ORS 192-3454 for the purpose of considering information exempt from public disclosure at 824, no, 1040 a.m. to review examination questions. A representative of the news media shall be allowed to attend the executive session by conference call or MS Teams and will be provided further login instructions shortly. The public phone line and MS teams will be muted for the duration of the executive session. Are there any representatives in this meeting? Yes. No. Uh, recognizing the on the phone. Recognizing there is no news media in attendance, the public phone line will be muted for the duration of the executive session. We will return to open session before taking any final action or making any final decisions. We are now in executive session. 